Hi, this is Anybody in X from the Candid Frame YouTube channel, and welcome to another episode. One of the things I wanted to talk about this week was the idea of photographing people through windows. It, it's a common street photography motif in which that physical barrier of the glass uh, allows people to make photographs that they might not otherwise make of a perfect stranger. There's a certain comfort level that I guess that, that can the photographer can experience when they have that that separation um, uh, of glass. And I guess to some extent, some people think that if that person I'm photographing is not happy with uh, the photograph, by the time they get up to the door and out to the street, I'll be long gone. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, but nevertheless, it, it, it results in an interesting practice in which these shots uh, become more than just about people walking up and down the street. And I chose some examples to sort of explore some of the some of the things to pay attention to the next time you go out and you're photographing a stranger through a window. Here's the first shot by Robert Miller. We don't have any XF information here, but I think this is one of those shots uh, that captures a lot of what I see in many of the images uh, that get submitted uh, on Flickr with respect to photographing someone through win uh, a window. Uh, they're often in a restaurant or in a coffee shop or maybe even a bar. And when they're facing out in the window, they usually are in their own thoughts. They're in their own world. And uh, I think that that's definitely what's happening here. Unless the person is with someone else in which they're really engaged, uh, this is an opportunity in which you really get to take in someone's face and body language as they're in that very sort of private moment while they're drinking their coffee or having a meal or just or just waiting for someone. And, it, and you get that from these two characters that are in uh, uh, the center of the frame. And you have the one woman with the uh, coffee mug in her hand, and then you have this guy, this other guy with his hands buried into his coat pocket. And in the far edge of the frame, you have two people who appear to be together who are engaging each other in conversation. But it's the pair of people in the, in the middle of the shot that really are key to this shot. They're very close in physical proximity to each other, but there's a, a, a distance that might as well be miles. You know, these people don't seem to know each other. Uh, they don't seem to have any sort of connection other than being, you know, present in this space for whatever amount of time that they decided to, to sit there having coffee and just waiting. And I think that that's a real part of the interest of the shot. The second thing is the reflection, and I think that that's something that if you're shooting in this way, you have to pay really careful attention to because the reflection plays a huge role in the success or the failure of these kind of photographs. And here we get a sense of, of place in terms of they're in a city, they're in an urban environment. Um, I'm not exactly sure what city this this is, but you nevertheless get the sense that they're in a really busy urban environment and uh, even with all the world sort of busy moving past them they are in this sort of isolated bubble uh, for the 15 minutes or 30 minutes that they're that they're sitting there at the window and I think it works really beautifully especially in terms as a, as a black and white image I think that uh, uh, images like this tend to work better as black and white because color can be really distracting, especially when you're dealing with such a range of elements within the shot. Uh, I wouldn't doubt that there were probably some really strong saturated, color, saturated colors in this frame that uh, made it necessary to convert over to black and white. And so I think this is one of those images that really, really works in that respect. Here's a shot by Simon Peacock. He made this with uh, a Rico. Uh, with a Ricoh camera, the GR, at one five hundredth of a second at f2.8, at a shutter speed of 12,800 uh, of a second. So he was really, really pushing it. And uh, this woman looks to be like she is on a, on a bus. Uh, yeah, it says here, bus passengers. And one of the reasons why this shot works is obviously her expression. We talked about this, this, this feeling of these people being in this zone. And she kind of exemplifies that. But look at all the different ranges of expression and personalities that are in this in this shot. She seems almost, you know, not necessarily sad, but intensely focused on whatever she's thinking about. While the woman who's next to her is busy, you know, going through her phone. And then you have a person on the 
far left edge of the frame who seems to be on a phone themselves, but they seem to be a little more engaged. And then you have another figure in the back, right behind the woman who seems to be the focal point of the shot, who seems to be looking in the camera's uh, direction. And then in the far right edge, we have what looks to be another reflection uh, of a face uh, or someone within the bus. It's really hard to to tell at the low resolution that uh, I have, I'm looking at the image here. But all of these faces sort of complement each other. But this woman who takes on a, almost a ghost-like pallor is such a dramatic element within the frame. Um, I think that the intensity of her gaze and also the fact that she is she's nearly overexposed, that, that she's so hot in terms of exposure within the frame, just draws us to her uh, as a magnet. And then all these other elements, particularly things that are made up of these mid-tones and these dark tones, uh, create this amazing contrast that draws us to her over and over again. Our eyes may wander through other areas of the frame, but almost inevitably we just come back to her and you immediately start thinking, who is she? What is she thinking? What What is she so focused on? Uh, I think it's a really good shot in that it begs us to ask the question of what's the story behind her in this image. And uh, and, and, and I think one of the, the reasons why this shot is so effective is because the camera is so close to the window. Um, I've talked in other videos about the distance that the camera typically has to the subject when we're shooting in the street. You may be shooting anywhere between 8 to 12 feet on average when you're photographing a stranger. But here, you're literally about three or four feet at the most uh, in this shot. And that imme immediacy that creates this intimacy um, that adds to the impact of the shot. Uh, I think having the bus, having the glass there, really allowed Simon to get much more physically close than he, he might have dared to if this woman was just standing at a bus stop waiting for the bus. Uh, I think this is a really good example about how having that physical barrier uh, between you and your subject really helps you to brave getting closer because this and a lot of other shots that we see in the flicker pool demonstrate that the closer you get, the more impact a shot can, can have. Here's a shot made by Gary Smith. He made this with a, a Sony RX100 M3 shot at 1 15th of a second at uh, F5.6 at ISO 1600. And again, you know, we're photographing people through a, west, a restaurant window. And here, the, the heart of the, of the image for me is the color contrast between the artificial lights that exist within this restaurant and the cool blue light that exists out on the street. Uh, that color contrast is at the heart of what makes this image successful. This image is all about the interplay of color. And uh, the, the figures in the window aren't doing anything particularly interesting. You have the woman in the background who's on a phone, and then there's a man uh, who's sitting opposite someone who has a ring on their on their finger, and they're engaged in eating or having conversation. It's really sort of hard, hard to tell. His head is face down, and I can only assume that he was probably, probably eating something. Um, the color, the overall composition, the way this thing is framed is, is great. We have this... Uh, graffiti on the far right that says love, 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 which is a nice little accent uh, and touch there that, that makes the shot for me. Uh, I talk about gesture a lot, and I think that that hand that we're seeing with the ring uh, is really important for that this shot to work for me. Um, if that hand wasn't there, um, the sign above the hand would have been much more important. It would have been a more of a, a draw. And my eyes still get led there, but the fact that the hand's there provides me a sense of connection between the, the fellow with his downturned head and the person opposite them. And the fact that the hand is sort of being directed towards his face helps to keep the focus there. Without the hand there, uh, I don't know whether or not this shot would work uh, as well for me as it does. I mean, it, there are a lot of things that I like about this shot, but we often talk about those small things that make that make the difference in the photograph. And, and it's the lack of those small things that sometimes makes the difference between a successful shot and a failure. Um, this is a spot that I would probably return to over and over again uh, just to take advantage of the light and the potential of different subject matter that enter the, enter the frame. Uh, 
Uh, I don't particularly like the bike being in the lower right-hand corner uh, of the shot. It's a little bit distracting. doesn't ruin the shot, but it's a little bit distracting. But I would nevertheless keep coming back to this scene just to see how different players uh, within this scene might result in a really interesting photograph. I think the potential here is so, so high that if you kept going back there over and over around the same time of year, uh, you might get some really, really interesting results. This is a place where you want you want to camp camp out, not just for that one time that you're there, you're there making photographs, but over and over as you continue to visit the location. Here's your shot by Carlos Sa, shot with an X100S, shot at 1 25th of a second, f5.6 and ISO 400. And here we're dealing with much of the same things in, with respect to the last image. Uh, you have someone who's in a, a cafe. I know this place. This is a Starbucks in downtown Los Angeles. And this woman's having coffee there. And just like the last shot, you have that color contrast. We have the, the quality of the light that's falling on her inside of there, which tends to be a slightly blue, slightly magenta. And then we have a much stronger blue that's happening outside on the street. And the only saturated reds that we have are the red cup, um, the, the lips of the mural across the street, and the taillight of a vehicle that's just passing by. So this is almost monochrome to, to a large extent, and there's just a few accents of very saturated color in the, in the shot. So here we're playing with that, that contrast of color, and we're also playing with the expression and the presence of the subject within the frame. And here she has her hand to her face, obscuring most of her face, so we only see one eye and her mouth. And I don't know whether she was holding up her hand to, you know, um, to hide from the photographer or whether or not that was a place she was already in. I kind of suspect that it's probably the latter. Uh, it's amazing that when you turn your camera up to, to make a picture of someone through glass, even though they're facing directly towards you, they still seem to be completely oblivious to you until they get this feeling that there's someone looking at me. And uh, I, I suspect that that was kind of what have maybe been May, may have been happening here when they made the shot. But again, you know, take a look at what we're seeing in the reflection. Uh, what's key for this for this shot is that reflection of that mural with that woman's face on, on the wall. We get these cars and other things in the, in, in the background that gives us a sense that we're in the city. And then we also have this uh, reflection of this building here, which t gives us a little sense about where we are. I'm very familiar with this area downtown, so I kind of know exactly where we are. But even if you're not from Los Angeles, you get these all these different elements that kind of say, okay, this is a, a city and a and, uh, very busy environment. And here's this woman that seems to be very isolated, except for the reflection of the photographer in the frame. Um, you know, shots like this uh, are really often about isolation. And, and because you have these people all by themselves uh, at these windows, often just doing nothing except being invested in their, in their thoughts. So I think the challenge is, is to try to make a photograph um, that takes advantage of all these different elements, but try to make something a little bit special. I think we get that with this last shot made by Robert Miller. We don't have any EXIF information here. But again, we have a subject here that is, I think, in a restaurant. Um, it says flame catering. So uh, I, I'm assuming that this is the store in which she, this person is. And again, we have... We have the person behind the window. We have the signage that gives us a sense of place of where we are. We have some reflection in the in the window, but we don't exactly know where we are because we're not seeing as much of a reflection as we have in the previous shots. But we do get a clear vision of the subject behind the frame, uh, behind the window. And here again, we have a person who seems to be in really deep deep thought. But look at the gesture. That hand reaching up to his bearded chin just makes the shot for me. I think it's, we still have that person that is in this very pensive moment, but the gesture, that accent, that flourish makes the shot, you know, really, really good for me. Um, you don't have a lot of control in things like that uh, with this. I and mean, your subject is there and they're going to be doing whatever they're doing. So you really have to be really aware about when you spot something like this, about whether you're going to make the shot instantly 
or whether or not you're going to sort of wait it out until you see the subject do something interesting. I usually choose the latter because usually when I see someone behind the window and I think I want to make a photograph, I'll carefully think about how I'm going to compose the shot. I'll take a look at the reflections. I'll do all those things and then I'll just be there, you know, fiddling with my camera, but out of the corner of my eye, constantly looking at them, waiting for them to do something interesting, looking for that gesture, that flourish that I think will give that shot a little something extra. Because if I make that shot immediately when I spot the subject, uh, it might not be the most ideal moment to make the photograph. Uh, if they're behind the window and I'm outside on the street, um, there's no reason to think that they're going to be moving anytime soon. So uh, I'm going to sort of wait it out. And just like with some of the other videos I've talked about finding the setting first, uh, I think photographing people behind the windows is a perfect opportunity to do that, to build the setting. With one of the shots that we saw earlier of uh, the woman in the bus, in that situation, you have to make the shot. You immediately have to see it, react, and make the picture. You don't have time to linger. In a situation like that, you just have to react and make the shot. But if time allows, take the time to slow down a little bit and uh, really sort of just take it in, refine your photographs, and shoot until you get something good. And once you get that, you know, keep shooting because sometimes you may get something um, something, something better. And it's amazing. One of the things that I'll, lastly I want to point out is sometimes when people see you making a photograph through the window, um, all you have to sort of do is smile. And sometimes I'll just, even though they've acknowledged me at that point, uh, I continue making photographs because at some point they'll just ignore me. If they're not coming out to ask me why I'm photographing, uh, they're just going to blow me off after a while and just allow me to continue doing what I'm doing. So I encourage you to do, do the same uh, if you if you have the opportunity to. So thanks again for joining me. If you haven't yet and you want to submit images to the Flickr pool, all you have to do is go to the Candid Frame page and just ask to be added, and I'll be glad to do just that. Uh, I get emails periodically with people who want me to invite them. Um, I have no way of doing it on my end. All you have to do is go to the uh, the Candid Frame page, ask to be added, and I'll, and I'll do just that. And if you haven't heard of the Candid Frame podcast, you can check it out at thecandidframe.com where you can hear interviews with some of the world's best photographers from all over the world. The interviews typically run 45 minutes and you can either stream it over your computer or download it to your phone or tablet using the Candid Frame app, which is absolutely free. So I uh, hope you're enjoying these videos. Drop me a line anytime and I will see you next time.